Okay, let's get started. Fantastic. Let's dive into the first step. Define. Determine your goal. Can you tell me what's prompting your interest in speaking this new language? Is it for travel, business, cultural immersion, or something else? Uh, mostly for travel, but I also want to become fluent in multiple languages. I want to become a polyglot. Um, I want to be able to converse fluently, watch movies, read books, etc. That's an admirable goal. Travel and the ambition to be a polyglot can open up many doors, both personally and culturally. Before we move forward, can you tell me which language you're most comfortable speaking in? English is my primary language. Great. We'll use English as a base for explanations and comparisons. Identify context. Since you're aiming for travel and general fluency, are there specific situations or scenarios where you foresee using the language? For instance, do you want to navigate airports, order food at restaurants, or perhaps engage in more in-depth cultural exchanges with locals? Uh, so I recently visited the Dominican Republic, and I want to learn how to speak Spanish. I've always wanted to learn how to speak Spanish. That's wonderful. Spanish is a rich language with diverse cultures and regions. Visiting the Dominican Republic must have been an amazing experience. Given your travel experience and desire to learn Spanish, let's phrase your objective as a question. How might I converse fluently in Spanish to fully immerse myself in Hispanic cultures, enjoy movies, read books, and travel comfortably within a month? Does that sound about right to you? It sounds great. Perfect. Let's move to the next step, conversational framework. Phonetics and pronunciation, Spanish has distinct sounds and intonation. The way sounds are articulated can vary between regions, but we'll start with a neutral accent. As we progress, you can decide if you want to focus on a specific regional accent. Essential vocabulary. We'll focus on day-to-day -day words and phrases that are crucial for initiating conversations, navigating common travel situations, and understanding the context in movies or books. Culture and nuance Spanish, like all languages, is deeply tied to its culture. We'll delve into common conversational cues, norms, idiomatic expressions, and regional differences. As we go through this process, always feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions. It's essential that we keep the learning experience interactive and tailored to your needs. Shall we begin with some basic phonetics? Yeah, sounds good. Let's go. All right. Phonetics and pronunciation. Spanish vowels are more consistent in their pronunciation than English vowels. Let's start with the five main vowels. A is pronounced like the A in father. E is somewhere between the E in bed and the A in say. I is pronounced like the E in see. O is close to the O in go. U is pronounced like the U in food. There are also unique consonant sounds in Spanish, such as the Ñ in niño, which means boy, and the soft J sound, which is like in English, as in jalapeño. A notable aspect of Spanish pronunciation is the rolling R sound especially in words like perro, dog. However, not all R sounds are rolled. Now let's practice a bit. Try pronouncing these words, hola, hello, gracias, amigo, friend. How do those feel? And do you have any specific sounds or words in mind that you want to explore further? Uh, the words were hola, amigo, and what else? I'm sorry. It seems I missed the rest of your statement. Could you please share your thoughts on pronouncing the words or if there were any challenges you faced? Uh, no, I wanted you to repeat the words that I, I'm supposed to pronounce. Ah, 
Ah, my apologies. Let's go over them again. Hola, gracias, amigo. Go ahead and give them a try. How did it feel pronouncing them? Hola, gracias, amigo. So pretty good. Well done. Your pronunciation sounds good. As we progress, we'll delve deeper into vocabulary, phrases, and more nuanced pronunciation. For now, how about we focus on some essential vocabulary? Starting with greetings, introductions, and basic questions can set a solid foundation. Would that work for you? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, it works for me. Great. Essential vocabulary, greetings and introduction. Buenos dias means good morning. Buenas tardes is good afternoon. Buenas noches can be used for good evening or good night. ¿Cómo estás? Is how are you? Estoy bien, gracias means I'm good, thank you. Mi nombre es your name. Translates to, my name is your name. Basic question. ¿Dónde está el baño? Is where's the bathroom? ¿Cuánto cuesta? Means how much does it cost? ¿Qué hora es? Is what time is it? You can try repeating these phrases or ask if there's something specific you'd like to learn. Remember, practice is key, so don't hesitate to speak them out loud or even incorporate them into your daily routine. It's a great way to start immersing yourself in the language. How are you feeling with these phrases? All right, update your prompt. Every time you give me an example of a phrase, wait for me to repeat it, and then um, correct me if I've made any mispronunciations. Got it. I'll provide the phrases one at a time, then wait for your repetition and offer feedback if needed. Let's start with buenos dias. Please go ahead and repeat it. Buenos dias. Excellent. Your pronunciation was on point. Next up, buenas tardes. Give it a try. Buenos tardes. That was well pronounced. Let's move on to the next one. Buenas noches, good evening, or good night. Please repeat it. Buenos noches. Close. Just a small tweak. It's buenas noches with an A in buenas. Try saying it again with that correction. Buenas noches. Perfect. Well done. Let's continue with, ¿Cómo estás? Please go ahead and repeat it. ¿Cómo estás? Almost there. Just remember the accent on the O in ¿Cómo? It gives a slight emphasis to the sound. Try saying, ¿Cómo estás? Once more, emphasizing the O a bit. ¿Cómo estás? That's it. Nicely done. Now let's try. Estoy bien? Gracias. I'm good. Thank you. Please repeat. Estoy bien? Gracias. That was spot on. Great pronunciation. Next, let's do Mi nombre es your name. My name is your name. You can replace your name with your actual name. Give it a shot. Mi nombre es Solomon. Perfect. 
Perfect, Solomon. Your pronunciation is clear and well articulated. Let's continue with a basic question. ¿Dónde está el baño? Where is the bathroom? Please repeat it. ¿Dónde está el baño? Excellent, Solomon. You pronounced that correctly. Shall we continue with more phrases? Or is there a specific topic or vocabulary set you'd like to focus on next? What do you suggest? Given that you're aiming for conversational fluency for travel, I'd suggest we focus on 1. Essential travel vocabulary Phrases and questions that will help you navigate transportation, hotels, and restaurants 2. Conversational starters Basic questions and statements to initiate conversations with locals or other travelers. 3. Cultural nuance. Some idiomatic expressions or phrases that are commonly used in various Spanish-speaking regions. We can start with any of these, or if you have a preference or another area you'd like to delve into, we can go in that direction. What are your thoughts? They all sound fantastic. Uh, you are the instructor. I will follow your lead. Thank you for your trust, Solomon. Let's dive in. Essential travel vocabulary. Transportation. ¿Dónde está la estación? Where is the station? Necesito un taxi. I need a taxi. ¿Cuánto cuesta el billete? How much is the ticket? Please start by repeating the phrase, ¿Dónde está la estación? ¿Dónde está la estación? Perfect. Well pronounced. Next, necesito un taxi. Go ahead and repeat it. Necesito un taxi. That was great. Now, let's try. ¿Cuánto cuesta el billete? How much is the ticket? Please repeat. ¿Cuánto cuesta billete? You're on the right track. Just a couple of corrections. One, it's cuanto with an accent on the a. Ah. Two, the word is billete with e, which is pronounced somewhat like a y in Spanish. So it would sound like billete. Try again. ¿Cuánto cuesta el billete? ¿Cuánto cuesta el billete? Excellent, Solomon. You nailed it. Now, moving on to some conversational starters. ¿De dónde eres? Me gusta este lugar. I like this place. ¿Puedes recomendar un buen restaurante? Can you recommend a good restaurant? Let's start with ¿De dónde eres? Please go ahead and repeat it. What does that mean again? Of course. ¿De dónde eres? translates to, where are you from? Please give it a try and repeat the phrase. ¿De dónde eres? That's spot on. Great job. Next, me gusta este lugar. I like this place. Please go ahead and repeat it. Me gusta este lugar. Just a small correction. It's este lugar, since lugar is masculine in Spanish. So the correct phrase is, me gusta este lugar. Can you try it again with that tweet? Me gusta este lugar. You're very close, Solomon. Just remember, when we're referring to a masculine noun, like lugar, we use este without the accent. So it should be, me gusta este lugar without the accent on este. Would you like to give it another try? 
me gusta este lugar. Oh, I think I put the accent. Perfect, Solomon. You got it. Lastly, for this set, ¿puedes recomendarme un buen restaurante? Can you recommend a good restaurant? Go ahead and repeat it. Oh, that is way complex. I'm going to need you to break it down. Absolutely. Let's break it down. One, puedes, can you? Two, recomendarme, recommend me. Three, un, buen, good. Five, restaurante, restaurant. Now try saying it in part, starting with puedes. Puedes. Puedes? 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 Close. It's puedes with a pronounced who at the beginning. Try saying puedes again. Puedes. That's it. Well done. Now let's move to the next part. Recommendarme. It's a bit longer, but give it a try. Say recommendarme. Recommendarme. You're on the right track. It's recommendarme with an O sound after the rec. Try pronouncing it as recommendarme. Give it another go. Recomendarme. You're getting there. The main thing to focus on is the beginning reco and the ending darme. Let's try saying it in two parts. One reco, like reco deed but stop after the O. Two mendarm. Combine them, reco mendarme. Take your time and try it again. Recall Mendarme. Almost there, Solomon. The L in recall is not needed. Just Rico followed by Mendarm. So it's Rico Mendarme. Would you like to give it another try? Rico Mendarme. You're very close. It's recommendarme without the extra N in the middle. Just think of it as Rico, like record without the D, plus mend, like mend a shirt, AR, the word R, me, in metal. So recommendarme. Let's give it one more shot. Recommendarme. That's much closer. Well done, Solomon. Now let's piece it together with the rest. Try saying the entire phrase, Puedes recomendarme un buen restaurante. Remember to take your time and pronounce each word. Puedo recomendarme un buen restaurante. You're making progress. Let's correct a couple of things. One, it's puedes, can you, at the beginning, not recuerdo, which means I remember. So the correct phrase is, ¿Puedes recomendarme un buen restaurante? Try again and take it slow. You're doing well. ¿Puedes recomendarme un buen restaurante? Fantastic, Solomon. You nailed it. How do you feel about the progress so far? Would you like to continue with more phrases or take a different approach? It's pretty good. I'd like to proceed. It's pretty good. It's intense. I think we can stop here for now. This was a fantastic lesson. Thank you.
I'm glad you found the lesson beneficial, Solomon. Learning a new language can indeed be intense, but every step you take brings you closer to fluency. Whenever you're ready for another session, just let me know. Enjoy practicing what you've learned and have a wonderful day. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep it up.